identity and culture is as real as the meanings we give to our experience. We are aware that defining the Caribbean was and still continues to be a challenge. We saw definitions of the Caribbean as sometimes opportunistic and also limited. This is good. We should always problematize a definition because definitions through language often give a tidy explanation of reality and not all of it. An identity may be defined as the way an individual sees him or herself and is recognized by others. Identity is constructed by one's personal history but also the social institutions that exist in our society that help define us. For example, in school, the holy position of a student. In the home, you may have the status of a son, a daughter, elder sister, younger brother. On a public street, you may be fair-skinned, red, browning. In New York City, you can be seen as distinctly black or immigrant in the United Kingdom. Identity is not fixed. It is contextual. Rolling. Now we are going to look at some of the factors that influence the way we form our identity in the Caribbean. An important thing to note is that as Caribbean people, we organize ourselves around various institutions. This would include race and ethnicity, and identity may emerge. So based on our particular racial or ethnic characteristics, which has pros and cons, ethnic identification can be a beautiful thing considering the ways in which Caribbean people have been dehumanized and denied their history throughout time. However, this can be perverse and love for one's race can be exploited in racism and ethnic pride can be a tool to blind others in ethnocentrism. So we must make distinction between understanding race and racism and how fragile our landscape is. The next important influence on our identity may be religion or not being organized in a particular religion. But generally membership in particular religious groups Structures offer a strong basis for identification with religion. This refers to the inclusion and the exclusion of particular groups. In the Caribbean, we often see that non-Christian groups have endured severe challenges in their social, cultural, and political struggles. Another thing that binds us, helping us understand who we are, would be history. An experience which includes slavery, identity, colonialism, the destruction of the First Nation peoples, these provide a united set of shared experience for a large group of people and can be identified by their current opposition to the forces that shape their lives. It's important to look to the works of Maurice Bishop in No One's Backyard and what the Grenada Revolution in 1983 was trying to do, how it saw itself as part of a bigger Caribbean project. Next, the way we vote, our politics. Many Caribbean people choose to identify themselves based on political allegiances. These are sometimes passed on. Oftentimes, we don't even question why it is we vote for someone, why it is that we support a certain political party. It comes through our families from one generation to the next. Most political parties are named with letters. Political culture entrenched in the economy and the opportunity for persons. You know, we don't really have ideological differences. We look at policy sometimes, but economic policy. Plenty of our cultures have two-party systems. Many are socially conservative groups, but also thought for the large role of the state in welfareism. But also, in our political culture, something that we cannot understand, we also have a lack of institutions, and we focus on personalities and politics. Usually, we don't vote for a party, we vote out a party. Every budget is a surprise. Language and linguistics is very important for our identity. It tells us our history, our way of interpreting the world. It kind of distinguishes us apart from other persons. And this has resulted in a rich cultural mix. And this linguistic tradition that we have of different languages, not only English, we have Anglophone territories, Francophone territories, Hispanic territories, even Dutch-speaking territories. We have our indigenous languages where people talk about our first language, our native tongue, all right? First Nation people's language, that we have pigeons, creoles coming out of these languages, that's how we are united as well, that stretch across ethnic divides, stretch across political divides and geographical divides. 
language helps us understand our identity, but also a common linguistic heritage. But it's all not hunky-dory when it comes to who we are. We also have differences. Our colonial experience help us divide us in French territory, Spanish territory, Dutch territories, and the British Caribbean. Also, islands geographically are disjointed from each other, and sometimes we think we are different islands, which leads to the idea of insularity and fragmentation among us, and petty jealousies among islands, the big word for it is parochialism. Also, in each society, we face the real issue of social stratification, which could bring certain classes views. Them poor people, people in high society, we see ourselves as different in that regard, or participants in a certain class membership, but also ethnic separatism, and we think we are different groups existing in the same society, what some theorists are called pluralism. So on the question of Caribbean identity, all are we are, all are we is one, all are we are one, you know, what is this about? In all fairness, you know, we could say that there are multiple Caribbean identities that exist, it's more than one. But something that unites us, especially for persons in the diaspora abroad, is a common historical legacy of slavery, colonialism, and now globalization, which is another form of hegemony. We inherited a certain set of norms and values, which some stem from the plantation system. All of us, you know, have a kind of high regard for cricket, as we saw in Fire in Babylon and what cricket did in England specifically and we love music, art and festivals especially our food and we have some commonalities there so in closing we have to think about you know what is it that makes us Caribbean you know once upon a time there's an earthquake in Grenada and I remember my aunt in New York calling us here in Trinidad and she was like are you okay you know everything all right you know and that's the kind of Caribbean family norms about closeness, nurturing, hospitality which may exist. But the interesting thing is that we may find that many Caribbean identities or a defined Caribbean identity may exist or is more evident in persons who live outside of the region, persons who form that diaspora of the Caribbean and not necessarily nationals involved in the Caribbean. So the question is, is a Caribbean identity more evident among Caribbean nationals living abroad than it is among nationals within the region? That's for you to discuss.